Good afternoon, this is Nicholas from Gandora Gaming. And I bring you guys my Punk Furion Gold Pride Deck Profile 2023 post Photon Hypernova. Post me testing his deck very, very extensively on Dueling Nexus. And let's just go straight into this. So, uh, if you don't know, Punk is probably one of my favorite archetypes of all time. This archetype is amazing. It's such a cool, flexible deck that can play so many versions of itself. And I'm trying out this version today. So let's just go straight into it. Uh, first things first, we got to play the three Ogre Dance. Uh, Ogre Dance is a one and a half card combo. And what I mean by that is this card is a one card combo, but you do need a discard. Meaning it's a one and a half card combo. Same thing with Foxy Tune. It's a one and a half card combo because by itself it does nothing. But she's the reason why it is a one and a half card combo. Because you have to discard one card in order to do the whole play. Uh, the only one card combo in the deck is Emergency Teleport, which I can't wait to show you. We also have the one Deer Note, because Deer Note's awesome. And, of course, we have the three Xeomin. Now, Xeomin is also the one half card starter, which is amazing. Basically, just says pay 600, add a Punk for your deck to hand. Foxy Tune, if you don't know, just says discard a Punk, or discard a card in general, especially when a Punk from your deck to the field, but it cannot be level 8. Uh, an Ogre Dancer that says, hey, discard it, add a Punk from your deck to hand, as long as it's on level 8. And Deer Note says it has two effects. One, a discard set from the field to grave. You get to special summon a Punk from your graveyard with a different name. Also, if this card to your hand, you can reveal it and another Punk. And special summon one of the revealed names and send the other one to grave. Really powerful card and it is also a must have one of for the combo. Uh, we're also playing the one Wagon. Because Wagon just says, hey, pick six, uh, pay 600, add a spell card, which is our field spell. And we also play the one Madam Spider, because this card just says, hey, pay 600, add our trap card, which is basically Chalice. And of course, we also play the one Sherikusai, who says, pay 600, Fusion Summon or Synchro Summon on your opponent's turn or on your turn. Really, really powerful card, and is also a must of one of the deck. And that is it for our Punk lineup. Uh, this is pretty standard, I feel like, at this point. I think people will finally realize that these cards are just one card start or 1.5 card starters. So people are starting to max out on these three in particular. And I think these three are good as one of those. I've seen some people play two Deer Note, but personally, I feel like you just brick on it with both playing the Fear Knots and the Gold Pride. So I think one of those is fine. If you want a more pure, pure build, two might be fine, but I personally say one is all you need. And that is it for the punk cards let's go on to the furions all right so for the furions we played the one regulus this guy is amazing basically he's an omni negate which is really really solid you send himself to grave or send another furion you control from your hand or field really really powerful monster and overall a great monster in general uh we also play one lily lily is what we want to get into grave in order to get all our plays started uh basically while this card is on the field uh, basically allows you to add a spell or trap and you get to hand. That is a Furion once per turn, which is really, really solid. We play two targets. Really, really powerful card and is a must have one of the deck. We're also trying out Duke. Uh, Duke is interesting. Uh, he's not part of the combo, really. But he is just a free level 8 that says, hey, target a Psychic, especially summon him onto the field. So that is actually pretty handy just because all our level 3s... Oh, actually, this entire archetype really is just a whole bunch of psychics. So this just says, hey, you have a psychic engrave. Special summon this guy for free, and he's a level 8, and we deal with level 8. So he is just a free body. You don't really use him for the combo besides that, besides he's just an extender. But overall, it's a great card. We're also playing the one Reaper. Reaper is a free bounce while he's on the field, which is great. It is only during your opponent's turn, but who cares? It is a very, very powerful monster, not to mention it's a level 7. So he does let you have access to Baron plays if you do own a Baron. So keep that in mind. Now it's time to go over our Gold Pride monsters, which we are playing two Gold Pride Nitro Head, three Gold Pride Leon, and three Gold Pride Carry. Uh, this, I feel like, is the perfect standard for right now. I was playing 3-3-3, three, 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 but to be honest... Uh, Leon and Captain Carry are the best two, so you just want to see these guys the most. And don't get me wrong, Nitro Head's still great. He's still my favorite overall. Nitro Head, all these monsters say if your life points are lower, special summon them onto the field. But uh, Nitro Head 
gives your opponent a token during the standby phase that they are gonna click a button, nuke it uh, as a quick effect, and then nuke all cards into adjacent zones. Leon says on special, you can special summon a gold pride from grave. I mean, you're locked into gold prides. But if you don't do that, he can quick synchro on your opponent's turn into any monster from your extra deck, as long as the levels breach. But you have to use gold pride monsters as material, which is important because I think a video or two ago, I did not realize that because I was using a uh, different simulator. And the simulator, of course, was just drag and click. It wasn't one of those automated things. So I was not able to realize my mistake until it's too late. And the comments, of course, told me. And of course, Captain Carry is a powerful monster. All normal or special just adds a trap card for me at the hand. We are playing Start Your Engine, but we'll talk about that in a second. So that is it for the engines when it comes to like Punk and then the Ferions and then the Gold Pride. These guys are really, really amazing. I think these ratios are perfect. Now, these next cards I am playing in the main deck, you can cut them. And I will explain why we can cut them. But I think this is the perfect ratio for like the main deck, main deck. Uh, the next cards that are tech options. Now, you could still play them. And I think some of the videos or like, some of the pictures I have was me playing with these cards. We have one tracker, the one wheeler, and three of this guy, Gillisaurus. Now, Gillisaurus is actually an insane card. All these guys are. Uh, once per turn, you can spy someone one of these guys on the field if you control a psychic. Gillisaurus just says, hey... You just special summon them onto the field for free. And then if your opponent has a monster in the graveyard, reborn into their field. But that does not matter because if you're going first, he's just a non once per turn free level three, which is pretty, pretty insane. Allowing you to have access to rank threes really, really easy in the deck. Not to mention he is a earth uh, dinosaur non-tuner, meaning we can actually make Barkeon really, really easy in this version. So things like Imperm and... Uh, what's it called? Um, Harp, what's it called? Imperm and Evenly are not as good against this deck because we can just summon out a Barkeon really easy in this deck as him as free material, which is pretty, pretty solid. So that is it for our monsters. Uh, you can cut these for hand traps, and I'll go into once I put all the cards together what that would look like. But let's just go all right, from so there. Now it's time to keep coming with our spells and traps. Of course, we are playing three Emergency Teleports. Emergency Teleport is the only one card starter in the deck. The reason why this is a one card starter is just due to the fact that it allows you to access the full play without having you to discard. Because you can just emergency teleport, get uh, Ziamen, Ziamen add Ogre Dance, Ogre Dance pitch for him, Sharakusai, normal summon Sharakusai, fusion summon, and then go from there. So this is the only one card combo of the deck. We're also playing one Punk the Jam or Extreme Jam Session. This card is amazing. Basically, uh, up to twice per turn, if you activate a psychic effect to pay life points, you draw one card, which is amazing. Not to mention, it has a effect where once per turn, you can banish a punk from grave, especially summon another punk from your hand. Really, really powerful card, and is a must of one of the deck. We're also playing Inferion Disc Coliseum. This card is also amazing. Uh, this card basically, on activation, allows you to add a Inferion from your get to hand. Also, while it's on the field, Inferions take twice the kill. Which is pretty, pretty solid. And overall, it's just a great card in general. Which is uh, really, really good. And overall, a great card in general. Now, this is the other optional card. Uh, I talked about how these are optional cards. This is our another optional card. Ghost Trick Shot. Now, you're probably wondering, why the hell are we playing Ghost Trick Shot? Well, if you know MBT, he probably did a video on Ghost Trick a couple, uh, maybe a year ago. And it basically went over the entire play with Ghost Trick Shot. So the idea is that any two level threes equals, uh, what's it called? Utopic Draco, which is pretty, pretty insane. So the idea is that we can actually make Utopic Draco before we have to commit to our main line, allowing us to uh, bait out hand traps. And if they don't have hand traps, at least have a Omni Negate and act in play, which is pretty, pretty nice. So, well, he's not an Omni he's a monster negate, but you know what I mean. And it allows us to have some protection before going to our main line. Because one of the issues with Punk is that there is a clear choke point in the deck. And if you hit the choke point correctly with the right hand trap, you do just lose. So, you do have to play it correctly. So, personally, I like the Ghost Trick Shot. I think it's a really cool engine. 
but it does require a lot of space in the extra deck and there is a lot of pros and cons to it i'll go over that once we go into the extra deck i talk about cards you can cut out but let's just go on to the trap cards now which i think are perfect we're playing one uh dangerous gooby or gobby uh this card is amazing this says hey target card your opponent controls negate the effects until the end of the turn which is chalice and then if you control a puck monster gain life points equal to the damage which helps in time also it's just a really really solid card that's searchable off our madam spider over here we're also playing one Furion cross Furion cross is just a one of uh the reason why we're playing it is sometimes you do open a hand with the d uh, disc call assuming hand which means she would be offline if you didn't have another search target. So that's really what this card is. It's just another spell or trap search target for this. This could also be Argus Station. If you don't know what that card is, the spell card, it says, hey, just send one Furion for your deck to grave. Really, really cool card. I was going with Cross just because Cross is also Interruption. Basically, this says, hey, uh, when you have a Furion monster control, either banish one monster bone controls or negate its effects, which is really, really solid. And then finally, we do play the two, start your engine. This is summoned off the uh, Captain Carry over here. And the reason why this card is so amazing is that on activation, uh, when your opponent normal or special summons a monster, tar uh, target it with this card. Special summon a uh, punk from your deck with a different name. And if you have three to the same name, that's great because you just get guaranteed free summon a Leon or Carry. And then you get to pop that card to your opponent controls. Really, really solid card. And that is it for the main deck. But before I go any further, I do want to talk about some issues with this version of the deck already. There's no board breakers, there's no hand traps in this version. Meaning, if you go second, you are going to have a tough time. No joke. This is a very combo heavy deck. It needs a lot of setup to get its plays going. So I highly recommend, if you feel like you suck at winning die rolls, and you don't want the highest ceiling, but you want a strong board, I would take out the shot. The Wheeler, the Tracker, and the three of this guy. I put in three Book of Eclipse and three Imperm. If you want, I can visually show that with you right All now. Alright, so this is the other version of the deck. We don't play the Shot, and we just play Book of Eclipse, and we play Imperm. Now, this version has some benefits to the other one. One, it allows you to play going second because you have some uh, enabled disruption. Not to mention, it allows you to have some board breakers in Book of Eclipse. Not to mention... Your extra deck isn't as cramped just due to the fact that the ghost trick package, this package right here, does require a five cards in order to do it, which does suck, but I think it's such a cool engine. I do want to at least show it in the video. So that is what I have right here. If you don't like the ghost trick and you think these cards, the Psychic Wheelers and the uh, Garasaurus are a little too uh gimmicky i guess you can take these out and just play this the reason why i like these is because this not only is a board breaker but it's good going first or second because worst comes to worst you just have it in hand set it your opponent starts doing plays you just book their stuff and then kill them on the crackback and then perm is the same thing drawing it uh, going second is great going first it's good and it's just a really really solid card not to mention neither one of these are once per turns so that's what i think about that and that is really it for the main deck lineup. That's my theories behind all these cards. I think the main deck monsters are perfect. I think this ratio you could probably take out for these. But that's just up to you. But let's actually go over the extra deck. Alright, so now it's time to go over version 1 of the extra deck. First things first, we gotta talk about our main man, Rising Carp. This card is amazing, but he's also the biggest choke point of the entire deck. Just due to the fact that he is so ashable, it's ridiculous. But basically, Rising Carp is a fusion monster that we summon off Shere Kusai, where you can tribute him on the field, special summon two punks of different names from your deck, uh, as long as they're not eights. Really, really powerful card. Only issue is, is just that Ash, Valor, Imperm, Gamma, uh, there's a lot of cards that hate on this card, Nibiru. There's so many things that can hate on this card that it's really hard. That's why I like this package, is because the version we're playing, version 1, can make multiple negates that can protect him before it's too late. Uh, we're also playing the one Cicada King. Uh, Cicada King is really, really good. He is mods of negation. If you don't like Cicada King, you can also play Gossip Shadow, which we're playing in version 2. Gossip Shadow is the same thing, or it just it's, an, it's a negate. But Cicada King only works on monsters on field. Gossip Shadow works from anywhere. 
But Gossip Shadow requires you to detach two materials. Cicada King only requires you to detach one. And Gossip King doesn't really do what you wanted to do. Just because it does negate it. But then we both draw one. Your opponent and you. Which is cool. But not great because your opponent could just draw it to another interruption. Or just another play extender to keep going. Which really sucks. We're all playing the one Alucard. Alucard literally does nothing. Uh, the only thing you need to know about him is when he's set to graveyard, you're going to add one ghost trick spell or trap from your deck uh, from your graveyard back to hand. We're playing two Mischief for the combo because Mischief is on summon. You detach a material from this card, which will be the Alucard. Add a ghost trick spell or trap from your deck to hand, which will be ghost trick shot. And then you just go from there. Um, you can also have the one Utopic Future and the one Utopic Draco Future. Just because this guy is a free monster gate, can't be destroyed by card effects. And he's just a really, really powerful monster in general. Not to mention, he does steal the monster he negates. Really, really solid. We're also playing the one Sargass. This card is amazing. This card just says, hey, on summon, uh, during the main phase, you can just add a uh, Furion from your deck to hand, which is insane. And then when a monster effect is activated, uh, an XYZ that detaches materials, you can quick effect, pop a card on resolution. Which is really, really solid. So basically, mean you can activate a card like him to negate something, steal. I mean, you can activate him to pop, which is really, really solid. Oh, We're also playing the one, uh, Zeus, because hey, Zeus is Zeus. He helps clear boards. Really, really powerful monster. We're playing all these XYZs. You might as well. We're also playing the one Barkeon, the one Star Leon, uh, which is great. Barkeon just says, hey, I negate all trap cards, which is great. He's the non one to return, which is great against evenly and things like that. Also gets Imperm as well. And then Star Leon is a really great thing. We can single on our opponent's turn in order to pop a card. Not to mention he gets really, really big and help you push for game. We're also playing the one Mantis. This card is a TCG exclusive that came out last set in Photon Hypernova. This card is stupid. On Synchro Summon, you just send a plant from your deck to Grave or an insect. All and right, uh, so that let's keep going. The next card we have is Punk the Jam Dragon Drive. This card is amazing. This card is probably one of the best synchros ever created for the archetype. Probably the best legacy support cards. Uh, basically what this card does is that basically on summon, you can pay 600 and then add a, a psychic level three from your deck to your hand, which is kind of insane. And then also has the effect where basically when this card's engraved and your opponent activates an effect in response to a punk effect, you just special summon this card from your graveyard. It's a really, really powerful monster. You do pay 600, which is actually beneficial for the deck because you want to lower your life points a lot for Psychic and Punisher. Uh, Psychic and Punisher is our boss monster. He's our King's B. He's our B's knees. This guy is literally an honorary punk. This card is stupid. Just for the simple fact that he is a 3,500 that gains attack equal to the difference of our life points. He's a Synchro 11, which is the perfect level for the punks because if you don't know the punks specialize in making eights elevens and uh sixes and they can also make rank threes and stuff like that and ranks uh, uh rank eights but they really specialize in eleven and eights and sixes so the fact that this card is an eleven and the fact that it's a psychic and the fact that it gains life points uh you know it gains attack you know the difference and this whole deck's gimmick is that it pays life to do things and it's unaffected by card effects, and it pays a thousand banisher card. This card is stupid in so many levels and wins so many games. You must play this as a one-up. And then finally, you do play the amazing dragon. He's the heart and soul of the deck. If you can tan see, he's right there. This card is stupid. On summon, you have an option to bounce cards up to your opponent's field, up to the number of tuners in grave, which is a kind of insane. It is psychic tuner. But if you're playing the Wheeler package, that is a, I think, grand total of like five Psychic Tuners that we're playing in a deck. I Meaning you can bounce up to five at the highest, but at the low end, you're bouncing up to two or three, which is still an insane bounce. Compulsor three is kind of crazy. Not to mention, he also has a factor of once a turn. You can reborn a Punk from Grave, Special Summon it. You can only use one or the other effect once a turn. I wish you could do either effect once a turn. Uh, that'd be stupid but hey what can you do and overall this card helps you push for game i forgot to also mention that rising carp also has the fact where this card is sent to graveyard you can give one punk uh it can attack twice that turn which is kind of amazing so the idea is that you can synchro him off and then use him as material while he's on field 
to then give this guy a double attack, which is pretty insane. Also, Xenomen has a weird effect where it just gives your opponent, like, gives a monster control permanent 600 when used as synchro material. So basically, this says, hey, your amazing punk dragon become a dirty 600 that attacks twice. How to definitely push for a game, especially when you make second and Punisher, especially when Star Leon gets really, really big. You have a lot of OTK ability for a very small engine package, which is kind of insane. So that is it for the extra deck. Uh, let's talk about the great things and the bad things. One, uh, version one can make a really, really powerful end board. Uh, this plus this plus, uh, let's see, where is he? Uh, the full combo is kind of insane. Uh, him on field as well. The only issue that you may arrive from is that Kashatira is the best deck in the meta, and you are dedicating five slots, one, two, three, four, five, to one extra deck monster. Meaning Kashatira can just rip one card from these five cards, and you just lose a game. Well, you don't lose a game, but you lose access to all of these because now they don't have. You can't make him. You this is useless. If they rip him out. You can't go into him. So that's over. You, you, they banish him. You can't go into that. So there's a lot of picky points for an engine and for one monster that requires five things in your extra deck. So that's the biggest drawback to the, like the combo more deck. Just for the simple fact that this whole ghost trick engine, there's so much in your extra deck that takes place. Where you could be playing so many other things. So now let me show you this version uh, point two. That does not play the Ghost Trick package and what other cards you can play. Alright, so I already explained how these are five cards in the slot that are optional to play if you take the entire Ghost Trick package out. Uh, now, what are you going to play for these five slots? Uh, you do also have to keep in the uh, Psychic uh, psychic Wheel uh, or Tracer, the one that's not a tuner, to play Barky on. So technically you have six slots. And if you take out uh, the uh, Wheeler, you don't have an Earth Level 3 uh, that's not a tuner. Uh, also, same thing with the uh, Gigasaurus. If you take those out, you don't have access to Barking Now, So technically, you have six slots available of what you can play now. Now, you could play more Psychic in and more Amazing Punk Dragon. Just have multiples and extra. Just so that, uh, ultimately, if your opponent is playing the best deck, which is... Uh, arguably, Cash uh, Tira, you can just say, hey, look, I have multiple copies. You're going to have to banish you a couple times in order to stop me. Or you can play alternative cards. One of the best alternative cards that I really like is ultimately Gossip Shadow. Gossip Shadow is really, really cool. I love everything about this card except for the fact your opponent draws one. If this card just says detach to negate your opponent's card, that would be amazing. But it doesn't. Uh, it's a really, really solid card. I've been playing this card forever. Also sucks it only has a thousand attack, which does suck, but it has a big ass, so that's great. So Gossip Shadow 75 is a great alternative to this guy because the whole gimmick is that you need a level three, rank three that negates monster effects, Ash, uh, Nibiru, things like that. Well, this, this card negates that, which is pretty, pretty solid. It doesn't end perfectly. It just changes the effect to we draw one, which is pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, which is pretty solid. Uh, we also have Ashra King. Now this card's also really, really solid. He's a card that came out of Power of the Elements. He's a secret rare. Uh, he requires three level threes, but he negates uh, monster effects during your player's turn and destroys it, which is pretty, pretty solid. Not to mention it gains 200 attack for every material, if I remember correctly, and he also has multiple attacks. Really, really cool card. Problem, he's a 2100 which is cool and he requires three level threes in order to make him he only requires two level threes but he requires you to play a brick in the main and five other cards in the extra deck which kind of sucks so these are your rank three negate options him him or him it's up to you of which one you play if you want the more room in the extra deck i would play gossip shadow if you're willing to play five slots for a boss monster you can play the utopic package it's really up to you. Really, really solid package there. We also have some synchro options. We have Navy Dragon Mech, who is in my original deck profile. We can quick synchro on this card into your opponent's field. And this card negates cards on the field up to the number of tuners in Grave. Which is kind of insane because we're playing like 20 tuners. Meaning we just negate our opponent's whole field. Which is really solid. And we can make synchro nines pretty interesting in this deck. 
We also have Desert Locust. This is a card we can quick synchro, synchro on your opponent's turn using any level three. And of course, uh, well, it's not really any level three. It has to be a Gold Pride monster. So it has to be the course Gold Pride Leon and Gold Pride Carry. Go into Locust, Locust Ripper card in your opponent's hand. Then quick synchro into Navy Dragon for a negation, which is really, really interesting. We also have Berserker Tangy if we're going a more uh, rank eight package or synchro eight variant. Uh, this card's also an amazing card. It's a quick effect banisher card. Really, really solid. Uh, really, really solid card in general. We also have Lancelot. Lancelot is a cool rank eight. Not only does he attack directly, but he's also an Omni Negate, which is pretty, pretty insane. Really, really powerful card. And uh, if he was easier to make in his deck and didn't require two level eights, I would be playing them. The only issue is that we already have a rank eight we have to make, and that's uh, Sargas over here. So I don't know if we have enough material to make multiple rank eights but hey that's an option we also have zombie sign for the same reason zombie sign is also good but i prefer him even though he's bigger because he is a 4500 which is a big boy but uh he attacks directly and he's an omni he is only a monster he requires a discard card also there's only a monsters on field so that's also pretty interesting uh we have mathematic final sigma because we can cook synchro into this as well which is interesting as well we have trishula we can also make Nightmare Shark, if you just want to rank three and attack directly to help make Zeus. The Downer to help do that. And of course, wow. another Zeus himself. We also have IP Masquerina, uh, Pit Knight Early, and Appaloosa. That's a cool combo you can do, make a Link variation of this deck. There's a whole bunch of things you can do with this extra deck. None of these cards lock you anything. So it's really up to you what you want to play. So that's really about it. I hope you all enjoy. Let's go on to the combo tutorial. We'll do combo one for the main version that I showed, and then we'll do deck two with the hand, well, with the Book of Eclipse and the uh, Imperms in the deck. Oh, <laughs>